This speech is prepared by Mike Baumhoff, CTO of Treasure Experience. The Treasure Experience is to create the most exciting adventure website on the internet and evaluating a myriad historic shipwreck projects worldwide. And they made the Treasure Experience security token. It is my honor to introduce Mr. Baumhoff. Please give him a big hand. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. It's a pleasure to join you all. Uh, came all the way from Florida in the United States, so first time over in, in South Korea here, and it's been, it's been great so far. So my name is Mike Baumhoff, and I am the Chief Technical Officer of the Treasure Experience, and we are the issuer of the TRZX security token currently available on the INX platform. So when we were invited to speak here, um, I thought long and hard about what I wanted to talk about, and as an issuer of security tokens, and we were the third issuance on the INX platform, there were no instructions. Uh, there was really no guidance. We had to stumble our way and figure out really how to market, how to launch this, and how to make this STO successful. So I wanted to focus on a part that wasn't as relevant, or it wasn't as obvious as it should have been to us, but now that we've gone through this, we've realized how important it really is to establish an immersive relationship with your investors and really make them take ownership over your project, your company, and the direction. So I want to start with this quote. Um, I think if we ground it, you know, everything I'm going to talk about in this, this, this is what it is. And for, um, for the translation services, I'll read it. I'll read it. Engaged investors are like seeds that blossom into thriving blooms when properly nurtured, while disengaged investors wither on the vine. Long-term long success requires building meaningful relationships from the outset. And this couldn't be more obvious than it is now after having launched our security token and starting to see traction and success to the point where we're looking to become the first security token outside of the INX token to close the initial offering and move to the secondary market. Uh, our target is to close this as soon as possible, hopefully by the end of this year. Now, when we talk about investors, we do have to talk about how investing is changing, how investor expectations are starting to shift. Um, the demand for direct engagement is there. Investors want to speak directly with company executives and those leading the project. There's a need for transparency. There's obviously an increasing interest in digital assets and a focus on accessibility. Now, this, this obviously makes sense now that we're seeing more and more investors come of age and entering into the investor pool. Growing up with social media, with everything at our fingertips, that is how investor, investing is starting to shift, where I want everything now, I want it direct, I want to be in contact. So as issuers of financial vehicles and investment opportunities, we need to be able to shift the way we interact with investors to not only provide the best outcomes and opportunities for them, but also to interact with them in a meaningful way. Because no matter what, everybody that's issuing an STO or any type of financial vehicle, we're all in competition for people's money, if, you, if we boil it down. So if we're not doing it in an appropriate way that an investor feels comfortable and has that strong relationship, somebody else will fill that void for that investor. So we all do need to shift the way we speak and interact with current and potential investors. Now, understanding STOs, obviously we're all here, everybody understands what an STO is. This is a new financial vehicle that we have at our, at our disposal. And we really are on the bleeding edge of this. So while STOs and tokenization may be very obvious to everybody in this room, for the regular investor that's not embedded in our world, it is extremely foreign. So a lot of what we're doing here and how I view myself is as, an, as much as a security token offer is an educator, an educator in tokenization and security token offerings. Because I'll tell you the biggest argument I have when we start to discuss the STO, as soon as people hear token, they relate it to cryptocurrency, altcoins and what they saw with pump and dump schemes 
and NFTs back in 2020, and it turns people off immediately. So as an STO offerer, we need to start changing that conversation and discuss the differences uh, between you know, what people just associate everything dealing with tokenization is, not cryptocurrency, but STOs. So obviously different because what we have now are the STOs providing a much greater opportunity than an IPO would. We have people that can now invest in an STO that typically wouldn't have access to IPO type of offerings. Different than the ICOs, as I said, STOs are regulated. More secure, safe, you're not gonna get caught up in a scheme. And then the role of blockchain, obviously we all, we all have a grounding in that, enabling transparency um, and knowing that there's a lot of security behind this. So as an investor, I can feel comfortable in knowing where my money's going, tracking it and seeing that progress going forward. Now, how does that relate to investor expectations? We, I just talked a little bit about, you know, obviously the STOs and then what investors require moving forward in today's world. So what we can do as we combine those two things, what would an investor today look for in an STO? Obviously an ROI, token utility, whether that's in real world um, utility of that token or um, in a virtual world, governance rights, and communication. So these are different aspects that would scratch that itch of a current investor. Every STO does not need to do all four of these. Make that very clear. What every STO must do is provide a return on investment and direct communication with investors. The others are optional. You can provide a utility. Uh, Token holders can have some sort of governance in your operation. It's not required, but you must show a path forward as a financial vehicle, and you must be accessible to these investors. That is the most important thing that we have found during the launch of our STO, is ensuring that we are open. Now, in our business, we're in shipwreck recovery, and it's exactly what it sounds like. We go out, we find lost shipwrecks, and we recover gold, silver, coins, um, and artifacts that were lost on the ocean floor. A lot of our work is secretive. You know, we've all seen movies where you wanna hide the treasure map, you don't want people to know your information. That's very real. And so it's not, it hasn't been natural for us, but what we've learned is in the beginning when we launched our token, we remained pretty secretive about what we were working on and we didn't see a lot of traction. The second we opened up these communication channels, specifically on Telegram and Twitter, it, everything exploded. We had a lot of engagement, people following us, investments started to roll in. It's the communication aspect that is the absolute cornerstone of a, of a successful STO. Now, transparency and communication, the way I boil it down is into six buckets here. Providing regular updates, timely disclosure of information, accessibility, being open to communication and being available for people with questions, comments, and having investors feel like they have a stake and they are in this battle with you. Having a clarity in your messaging. Now, with an STO, we're breaking down a lot of the barriers. So instead of a publicly traded company where once a quarter I'm getting an earnings report that's riddled with numbers and a lot of uh, structured language, people are having direct communication with us. So boil down your message to just regular conversation. There's no need to put up a front or make this more complex than it needs to be. The investors are fluid. They wanna feel like they're a part of what you're working on. So just speak as you normally would. Manage those expectations. I think it's a very obvious thing. Under, under promise and over deliver will never make anyone mad. So make, make sure you're not saying things that you know you can't, can't deliver on. And then security measures. Just by nature, being an STO and on the blockchain, all the security measures are there. We've launched on the INX platform and any of these regulated exchanges are gonna provide all the security needed. As issuers, it's not up to us to create that security. We work with the people that have done all that work to ensure that that's done correctly, but we do have to be knowledgeable upon it because at our core, 
at the early stages of STOs right now, we have to be educators more than anything. So being knowledgeable about all those features so that you can have direct conversation with potential investors is critical to them believing um, in not only your mission, but your ability to deliver on that. So continuing building trust and transparency, a lot of this is based on just the nature of the blockchain. Actually, the four squares on the left all have to do with you know, what Bob back there and the folks at INX are doing for us. So we rely on them doing all the hard work. We focus on the right two buckets. So clearly defining the ownership rights, and this is all done in the offering documentation, uh, documentation making sure that we were delivering a a really great financial vehicle that we knew people would believe, uh, believe in. And then allowing investors to track investments and um, interact directly with us. So we're very open about our communication with everything that we can be. Um, some things we just can't disclose due to the nature of our work, but anything that doesn't require some secrecy on our end, we are communicating with our current investors and potential investors on a daily basis. So. Uh, in no way do they feel like we are someone they can't they can't reach. They see us interacting with them on a on a daily basis. Now, one thing we didn't know walking into this was the need to have an STO specific marketing campaign. So, not only with our business. Look, um, what we do is we go out and find, we find shipwrecks and recover the lost commodities that were on board. Now, our business has shifted a little bit where traditionally we would have a wreck, you would go out and find investors to fund that project, and everything was based on the successful recovery of that ship. We changed it a little bit and we focused on how do we monetize the journey to discovery? So it's not so much dependent upon us actually recovering. We're documenting and bringing people along for the ride, our journey to going and finding these shipwrecks. And then the shipwreck recoveries are just the icing on the cake. So when it came down to selling this token, what we wanted to sell was security and the sense of adventure that everybody feels um, in, in their daily lives. Uh, so it, it became really important for us to have that marketing and messaging to go with this token. It wasn't enough to say, hey, we're offering this token at this price and we expect it to jump to this price in the future because we recover shipwrecks. We had to lay out a, a, the foundations of our business model, ensure people why this was a, going to be a safe, the safest investment that we could possibly offer with the excitement of very high returns based upon us recovering shipwrecks. But we have a plan where it's not only based on these one-time pops, it's consistency across the board. So having that communication, PR and media outreach. So we work with firms, we get picked up in magazines, uh, uh, podcasts, you name it. We're always trying to get in front of people. And then catching and holding the attention of these investors. Again, we're always coming out with something new, something more is happening. I think having that cadence going forward of knowing you're always gonna have more information and more excitement um, has been really great for us because we have seen investors come in and they've returned and continue to invest 13, 15 times as we've moved forward. So an STO isn't a one-time event. It, it is in a sense that you're only, it's only gonna be the initial offering once, but as soon as you collect money, get, you're off to the races. So people can come back to the well and, and um, there's always people that can come into the fold. So always treat it as if you have all of your investors already and just keep chipping forward and creating that buzz and that excitement. To create uh, immersive investor experiences, again, people just want to know everything is at their fingertips. So having that real-time financial data, interactive dashboards, direct communication and personalized experiences um, is, is critical to think about. So regardless of your business, ours is easy. You know, Going out in the water, finding a shipwreck, diving, all that cool stuff, it's easy to have a really great experience and create the excitement around it. But any business can 
think through a little bit and say, what is your treasure and what is your journey to that treasure? And how can I create a really great experience for investors to attach themselves along the way? Now, talking a little bit about what we have. So when we established the TRZX token, we created six revenue streams that drive into returns for token holders. We have our expedition recoveries, our technology licensing, so we develop underwater remotely operated vehicles. Um, two primary inventors right here, my partners, Mark Garan and Chris Garan. Uh, we are establishing our live stream membership so people can join our membership and actually come along with the divers and discover these ships as the, di as the, the divers discover them. So think of it as reality TV on steroids because as soon as a diver sees it, you're going to be looking at a camera uh, attached to his helmet along with him. Media and content deals, we're working on some television show pitches right now. Um, and really creating that excitement around the journey. You know, people going out, finding shipwrecks, being on the water. Uh, there's a lot of need for that, especially in the entertainment sector, and we're looking to fill that void. Metaverse experiences, so we're partnering with a couple people to dive into the metaverse. I think I can safely say we are the only uh, marine exploration company that is branching into the metaverse and into the world of SDOs. And then merchandise. So as we build up our membership and our fan base, uh, there's a lot of merchandise that we, we look to be selling as well. Each one of these buckets provides a revenue stream for disbursement to our token holders. So from technology licensing down to merchandise, that's annual revenue coming in from t uh, traditional business uh, operations. Expedition recoveries. That's, that's where we create a lot of excitement. So what we've coined is something called an RMD, which is a um, random monetized distribution. So traditional STOs are gonna offer a one time a year or maybe biannual um, disbursement. When we discover a shipwreck, as soon as that shipwreck is monetized, that becomes a disbursement that's immediately returned to investors. And that can happen multiple times a year. So that's where we create a lot of excitement where people know they're gonna get yearly, yearly distribution just by seeing the show come out, the memberships, merchandise sell, sales, all of that stuff just equates to stable returns for investors. And then every time we're on the water, and so we're communicating with people consistently, they know when we're going out, Every day could be a discovery day leading to a, a distribution to our, our token holders. So again, when we talk about how do we create an immersive experience for, for investors, this isn't a passive investment. We want people to really be involved in what we're doing, knowing every day could be a very exciting day for all of us. So creating the excitement. So I just put together a couple, couple things that we do um, to get people excited. Uh, our Telegram channel, you can find us there. Uh, you see some, some images of the boat on Krypton Air Weekly magazine, um, and just some images from us doing our work. So we're constantly trying to drum up the excitement. Uh, naturally, as oceanic explorers, there's a lot of excitement to what we do. Um, and we're translating that to an investment. So I like to picture somebody wearing a treasure experience uh, sweatshirt, sitting down watching a live stream, or the reality show of us going out and finding uh, gold and silver off a shipwreck. And as they see it being pulled up, they know that is equating to returns to me as an investor. And that's the most immersive reality TV you can possibly have. So again, we're talking about STOs, the initial offering, but much more than that is creating the foundation for communication going forward, ensuring that you have a successful STO, get the STO, STO off the ground, but you wanna lay the, lay the groundwork for the secondary market and the retail investors going forward. Don't take your eyes off the horizon while, while right now, trying to close the round is probably the most important thing, 
you want to make it so that you're carrying that future going or that value going forward. So harnessing the, the investors, making sure they have buy-in, they all become ambassadors for your project going forward because the STO should just be the start. And that should be the lowest price that you're, you're ever going to have your token at some point because with, with what you're, the work you're able to do and you, you deputize all your investors to go out and sell on your behalf, you should see your token sales really, uh, really rise moving forward. And with that being said, uh, thank you all for, for listening to me today. Uh, please connect with me on Telegram. Uh, if you wish, you can look up the TRZX uh, group on Telegram as well. Uh, more than happy to have any conversations that you all have. Thank you very much.